Hello, my name is Benjamin McDonald, and I work for the YouTube channel Hacksmith Industries, and today I'm going to talk about Jetsons and Autonomous Drones, Star Wars Edition. For those of you who aren't familiar, Hacksmith Industries, we've been around for since 2006, and we take ideas from movies, TV shows, and video games, and make real working prototypes. A few of our more popular videos are our world's first retractable proto saber our hoverboard that we made with haulback arrays, our real half-scale three-motor electric Cybertruck that has enough torque to tow a real F-150, our power loader series, that one's been going on for a few years, but we're making a real full-size power loader from the movie's Aliens, and we're gonna have it moving this summer. Our Predator helmet, I, I worked on that project, that one also uses a Jetson. And then one of our, mo or our, our most popular video is the Captain America Electromagnetic Shield. So, at the beginning of the project I was given a brief, and this is kind of what it was. We need to make a drone that flies and can carry a Nerf blaster and all other equipment required for autonomous flight. It needs to be able to find a human target and orbit around the target while shooting at random intervals. So we just took, we made our own custom racing drone based off of a racing drone, a Jetson, and then a modified Nerf gun, and that was it. The reference material, uh, but it was the Star Wars Episode Four lightsaber training droid, similar to this one, because we make lightsabers, so we have to make a training droid for it. Now, the real one looks a little something like that. Now, there's one problem with that. There's no place for the air to go, so we had to take some liberties with the design, but overall I think we did a pretty good job. This was the final drone that we came up with. It was fairly large, about the size of a basketball, bigger than we wanted, but it worked out in the end. The top, we have the Z2 camera. We use that for our vision processing. Of course, the Jetson, it's an Xavier NX, and it's mounted just under the bottom of the main carbon fiber plate. You can see it just barely there. And then on the bottom, we had our modified Nerf blaster, and that's what shot the balls at the whoever was training. And let's, let's break down the software and go through all the individual components. We had the input and the output to the drone. It required some special hardware to decode and encode the signals from the remote to the drone through the Jetson. We had the computer vision and person recognition. We used the Z camera and the Z library for all of that. And then we had our navigation code. It was a custom PID-based controller to control the drone and fly it around in 3D space. And that's just an example of output from the Z camera that made our job a lot easier. The inputs and outputs of the drone. We, we had to keep a normal receiver on the drone, or normal RC receiver, since we wanted to fly it like a normal drone. We didn't want to make a custom controller. We didn't want to rely on a web interface. And in case of an error or a bug, we wanted to be able to take control of the drone manually so that it wouldn't crash into something or someone or anything. We wanted to be able to control it. And for the video, the autonomous flight patterns may not be exactly what we wanted to, so we need to be able to fly it manually at some points. We interfaced the jets in through a custom hat that we designed and built. Both the receiver and the drone use a protocol called SBUS. SBUS is a serial-based communication that was designed for RC equipment, so all RC equipment can speak the same language. And our co-op Sophie, she wrote a majority of this code, and she helped design the circuit board. And there's, there's the hat we designed. Just plugs right into the 40-pin header, it has the serial chips that we needed, it had the servo driver to drive the Nerf gun, had an interface for the LiDAR, and for the um, serial, for the receiver. And for those of you who don't know, the GPIO pins on the Jetsons are very similar. They're actually the same to a Raspberry Pi, so in theory that shield could also work on a Raspberry Pi if someone didn't have a Jetson, but with the Nano 2 gig, almost anyone can have a Jetson. The computer vision now. For being honest, that's the part all of you are here for. We gotta admit it, we kinda cheated. We used someone else's code for a lot of it. But that's the advantage of a system like the Jets. There is a ton of code out there for people to use for their own projects, to base their projects off of, to reference from. And in the end, we used the Z camera and we used all their libraries. It's an AI camera, supports Windows and Linux, and they have special support for Jetsons and L4T. It's optimized for all Jetson hardware. It runs amazingly. We are quite happy with that. 
It has two cameras on board with built-in ISPs and an IMU package, and it all interfaces over a single USB 3 port. Super easy to use. The Z camera, from their libraries, it automatically gives us a bunch of information. There's more that I'm not going to mention here because it wasn't relevant, but a ton of amazing information. It gives you a floor plan, so we could use that to identify where we are relative to the floor. IMU data, so full um, nine axis gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, and a barometer, and a temperature sensor if you need that. A point cloud of the surroundings for like SLAM based navigation. If we wanted to improve this project and make it better, we could have added SLAM to avoid posts and walls, but for the scope of this project, that wasn't quite necessary. We didn't want to add that complexity. And most importantly for us, the positions of any object that is programmed to recognize, for example, people. But you can feed it any CNN modules that you would want to have it detect things such as cars, road signs, tennis balls, I don't know. You could feed it whatever you want. The Z camera is incredibly easy to work with and adjust. And the coordinate system that it returned from the objects is relative to the camera, which was incredibly useful for us to write because we didn't want to worry about working in a global coordinate system and worrying about all those transforms. It's a bit of a weird coordinate system, but totally workable. And that's just an example of some of the point cloud data that the Z2 camera can put out. It's incredibly powerful and quite cheap. Then the navigation code. This was stuff that we wrote. And then for a main flight controller on the drone, we used a hobby drone flight controller to running a firmware called Betaflight. Betaflight was designed for racing drones, and it's been evolved to use to work on camera drones and a large variety of drones. It's fairly expandable and easy to use. Betaflight works a little differently than any drones that most people are used to flying. For example, with the DJI drones, if you let go of all the sticks in the position that they're in, the drone will often hold its position, and you can push the sticks around to drive its position directly. The way Betaflight works, because it was designed for racing, is it's meant to work on the angle of the drone. So by changing the stick position, you change the angle that the drone is at. It's totally fine. We can work with that. There are other solutions like ROS that we could have run on the jets to add the functionality that we need. The Z2 has the ROS node that you need. And it's awesome. You can run ROS on a Jetson. I've done it. It would have worked. But we figured it would probably just be easiest to write a simple PID to run this. And I, I think overall is the right solution. Keep it simple when you can. Positioning the drone in 3D space. Now, this is somewhat challenging. In this case, it was the part of the project that we definitely struggled with the most. Since the camera already reported the position of its target in the correct coordinate system, or in a, in a coordinate system relative to the drone, or relative to the camera, instead of relative to the 3D space, that made our math a lot easier. We could just point the drone directly at the target and set the distance that we wanted to, along the z-axis in this case. And then the height was controlled with a simple PID and a 2D LiDAR pointing straight down from the drone. Fairly simple. We could have used the floor plane detection. The problem is that sometimes when we pitched back, uh, we lost the floor plane, and that probably wouldn't be good if the drone forgot where the floor was in flight. So we figured a LiDAR was the easiest way to do it. Most of the shots in the video, sadly, we had to fly it by hand. Since the video team wanted it in a certain place for the shots, and that's fine. We added that functionality, but it did fly autonomously. So that was, this was a shot from our video. This was James, the owner of the company and the host of the YouTube channel, standing there with a lightsaber. And you can see the drone on the other side of the frame getting ready to shoot him. And then the next shot, there it is actually shooting at him. Now, in that shot, he was using the plasma lightsaber, which, for those of you who are aware how it works, it didn't really deflect the balls. So he just kind of got hit by them through it anyway, since it's just a cloud of plasma. And the balls aren't in there for long enough for them to evaporate or they just kind of fly right through it. So there are some challenges of making projects for YouTube. We, we aren't a research team. We can't try to develop every single bug out. We have to make it work for the video. And that's what we did in this project. Since we need to upload a video once a week, our average project needs to take less than four weeks to complete and film. We have four engineers, so on average, that we have a bit of a rolling buffer with co-ops. So every so often, projects take longer, and this happened to be one of them. This one took a whole four months. This was the most complicated software project we've ever done. We've made drones before, that's fairly run of the mill, but a drone to carry all of this hardware and run all the code on it, that was quite complicated. We designed the entire frame, all of the Nerf Blaster, and programmed it almost all ourselves. We used someone else's computer vision, 
but all the navigation code, all of the hardware code, all the interface, we need to write all that ourselves. Without a product like the Jetson, this wouldn't have been possible. Being able to write all this code and test it on the same platform is incredibly useful. Being able to write it through an SSH terminal or just plug the drone directly into an HDMI monitor and keyboard was super easy. We could view all the log files directly on the Jetson. We could stream them back as a CSV file. We could be connected to SSH and watch it live. It was, and we could run a remote X server and view exactly what the camera was seeing. Made it so easy to develop and debug the system. With all the processing power, we didn't need to worry nearly as much about efficiency and optimization. So we didn't need to worry about using a language like C++. We were able to write everything in Python and make it work. We didn't have to worry about saving memory and storing objects effectively. It was, it made the development a lot easier than it would with something like a Raspberry Pi. And with all the pre-made libraries that exist for the Jetson, it makes it a lot easier for us to do whatever we need to, and it's really easy to port Raspberry Pi libraries for things that already exist. So we, as I said before, we used Python for all of the code on this project. We did the computer version with the Z library, which interfaces beautifully with OpenCV, making our life super amazing. And then we use the Stereo Labs library for the Z camera. Now, I have a confession to make. I love Python so much, I adopted my own Python. That's my snake Marley, and that's James holding him. I, I like Python and pythons. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the insight on how we make projects of this and how Jetsons can be used in projects for everything from research to entertainment purposes. I think we still have some time for questions, so we'll open it up. Thanks.